Just so you know, last year, in 2020, I was supposed to hike the AT. And due to the ATC telling people not to begin their hike, they came out with that directive four days before I was leaving for the AT. But I already had my trail tag. So that is my tag. And the other thing I am taking that's hanging on my pack is the AccuRite thermometer, which resets every 24 hours. It'll show you the min and the max temperatures. So it's nice to know if it froze the night before. Let's get into the pack. Well, welcome everybody. This is my 2021 Appalachian Gear through hike gear video. Well, what you see right now in my studio, ha ha ha, this comprises all of my hiking clothes. So let's start with the pants. The pants are convertible, cool hiking pants. So they unzip right here. The bottom part comes off and they turn into shorts. And then I have a short sleeve base layer, Under Armour Merino wool shirt, and then a Columbia long sleeve hiking shirt over that. For underwear, ex officio underwear, and then in towns, I, I'm bringing two face masks in case I lose one. And then the most important part, your feet. First of all, all almost all my clothing is treated by Insect Shield. And Insect Shield, you can send away as much clothing as will fit in a bag that they send you for $79.95. And you fill that bag up, ship it back to them, they treat it, and then send it back to you. Well, the Insect Shield treatment of permethrin actually lasts through 70 launderings. Unlike the permethrin that you just spray on, which might last a month and you have to keep retreating it. So let's go back to the feet. First of all, I'm going to have a base layer of Injinji socks, their ankle socks, followed by a pair of darn tough compression socks. These go almost up to my knee, very important. And then over those, I will wear ankle supports, at least in the beginning. All that gets put on and then I put on my shoes. I'm wearing Ultra Lone Peak 4.0s to start with, which have really, really good traction. You can see the traction. And then over the shoes and socks and ankle supports, I'll be wearing Dirty Girl Gaiters. So there you have my hiking clothing. Next, we'll move on to a couple of more outer layers. Okay, my outer layer is a mammoth hoodie. It's a fleece hoodie. I love this thing. I wear it all the time when I'm out hiking. Uh, it'll keep me warm when I'm hiking in uh, about 40 degree weather on up. And then over that, when I get to camp, I have a custom and light equipment Apex Torrid jacket. This is a synthetic jacket. I chose orange on the inside. It is a men's XL. I chose the XL because I just I like to have extra layers underneath and I wanted to make sure it was large enough and it fits me fine and then in one of the pockets this pocket right here are my merino wool gloves which I'll show you next all right so these are merino wool gloves I believe I bought them at REI 
and I really like them. Over the top of those, if it's really cold or rainy, I do have Gore-Tex mittens, which I will show you down the road here. All right, before I load my pack up and then unload it for you, I wanted to show you the back side of my pack. Or I guess this is the side that goes against my back. And I want to show you, it's a medium Z-Packs Arc Hall backpack that's actually been modified to be what I call an Arc Hall Air backpack. And what's changed are these rods right here. These rods are actually from an Arc Air. And I just modified the pack, took out the real thin rods and put these in because these are pre-arced. They don't bend, they don't move. And then I left the pad, the mesh pad in here that goes against your back because what I found was if I took this out to save half an ounce of weight or something, the arc here would actually pull out from this little pocket and that's a problem. So once I put this back in, it actually maintains a lot of pressure on the pack <coughs> to hold these arc air rods in place. So that's an important thing to know if you're going to modify your pack. And I actually had to go from a medium hip belt to a small hip belt because I added the, the FUPA, which is this thing right here. And with the FUPA, it adds about two inches to the hip belt. So I did not need the medium hip belt any longer. So let me pack this thing up, fill it up with everything I'm taking, and then I'll show you what it looks like, and then I'll unload it for you. My pack is completely loaded and I just weighed it. So that is the FUPA. Then I have two hip belt pockets. I have a water bottle carrier on one strap and on the other strap I have my garment in reach. I have a little empty right now z -Pax wallet for miscellaneous tiny items like maybe my lapel mic. I have my glasses, prescription glasses. These are sport glasses. They are polarized and transition. And then I have another pocket right here, which has uh, Burt's Bees, lip balm, and my little alligator crocodile, and then some other miscellaneous stuff in this pocket. This strap, I also have a snot rag and sweat rag, bandana. And then on this side, I have my cook kit in the side pocket and my water uh, purification, water bottle, scoop, sea knock, it's all in there. I'll show you in a little bit. Then on this side, oh, I have my trekking poles, my Gossamer Gear umbrella, a Gossamer Gear thin pad that's going to go under my sleep pad, and then on top I have a Z pad along with my Zero shoes, and then on the bottom, very lightweight, I cut down a sunshade and I also made a koozie out of this material. This is going to go in the vestibule to try and prevent mud from tracking into my tent. So now I'm going to go through each pocket and then we'll go through the pack itself. I just weighed the pack with everything in it and that's with food, fuel, and water for five days, 32 and a half pounds loaded. I think my base weight's about 22. Oh, and I want to add that I do have hand sanitizer hanging off the bottom. It's right below my water. 
water bottle. So if I take a water bottle out, there is a small elastic strap that you just pull and the bottle will come right out. Uh, this little thing right here, uh, along with down below, this will hold my umbrella so that I have the ability to hike with the umbrella when it's raining out. All right, let's take out everything from the side pocket. So you have a water bottle. This one's a one liter. Then I have a C-knock container inside my scoop. <clears throat> C-knot container, and then I made a scoop to scoop water out of a smart water bottle. That's handy to have when you have poor quality water, and there's nothing else in that pocket. This pocket has my cook kit. After removing the cook kit from this side pocket right here, I have this real lightweight bag with a draw strap at the top then inside the bag is my pot it's an ultralight titanium pot to boil water in I have a hot lips that goes around the edge so you can drink out of it if you want I have my fuel stand this will hold a small or a large fuel canister to keep it from tipping over I have a collapsible cup MSR Pocket Rocket Deluxe, which has uh, it has a regulator and uh, an igniter. Really like it. Really works good. And then a half a bandana that I wrap everything in. And then my small fuel canister will go in there as well once I get on the trail. And there's everything I just showed you. The stove is wrapped in my bandana small fuel canister that will fit in there as well. Now I will take out everything from this pocket. Here is everything that was in that pocket. I will be carrying my trekking poles and using my trekking poles most of the time so those won't be in the side pocket. This is my Gossamer Gear, Gossamer Gear umbrella ultralight. This is a Gossamer Gear 1 8 inch pad. It's very thin. This will go underneath my sleep pad in the tent. And this is the Z-Pax Duplex Freestanding Kit. It's actually four lightweight um, poles that snap together. And the duplex can actually be set up without any uh, trekking poles. And it weighs 10.1 ounces, the reason why I am bringing it is because there's so many people starting the trail this year that I may have to set up my duplex in a compromised area that's maybe not suitable for all the stakes and so that makes it a freestanding kit. Uh, it's also good for on top of mountains, on top of uh, sand, so if you want to put your tent up by the beach it's good for that the tent platforms up in the Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, when they have the wooden platforms you can use a freestanding kit for that as well. So I have that option. So there you have what was in that side pocket. Now we'll go over what is inside this pocket that's on the shoulder strap. All right first of all we have the Appalachian Trail button was given to me as a gift and then I have another little packet of hand sanitizer some sunscreen some noon electrolytes I have a couple of cloths to wipe my lens some Burt's Bees lip balm and my crocodile that's my little companion on the trail 
Another thing I forgot to show you was this little whistle. Have that on there and then my Garmin in reach. Next I'll show you what's inside the first pocket which would be on my left. It doesn't really matter, I'm going to be switching stuff back and forth between these two pockets all the time and the pupa. This is what was inside that pocket. I have my right in the rain pad with a pen that writes on that. I have my top light, which is real lightweight, rechargeable, and it has four different settings for brightness. So there's the lens. And what's nice about this light is it tells you how many hours are left on the charge of the light. And if you put it on the lowest light setting, you can hang it in your tent at night. It will last 74 hours when it's fully charged at the lowest setting. So that way you can leave your tent and you can always find your tent in the dark because it'll have a little light in it. I have my body glide, my first aid kit, which has ammonium D along with water purification tabs if I need them, neosporin and a couple of band-aids. I have uh, a spare fire starter, it's uh, the fire steel, and then three spare batteries for my headlamp. This is what was in the other pocket. This has my wind pants and my rain kilt, and this is my water purification which is a Sawyer squeeze, along with a coupler, a spare cap, and at least one spare washer right there at the bottom. If you lose your washer on the Sawyer squeeze, you cannot filter your water any longer. So everybody should carry at least one. They're super lightweight. I carry actually two. You definitely want to carry a couple of spare washers for your Sawyer squeeze. Next, we'll go to the top of the pack. On top of my pack, I have my Z seat along with my Zero camp shoes. So that's what I'll wear when I get to camp. They're pretty nice. I've worn them quite a few times and so far they've lasted for me okay. Oh, one thing I just found <laughs> because it blends right in with the mesh, I forgot to show you these. This is where my cook kit goes and I just put these. Gore-Tex, these Gore-Tex mittens inside. So they just go in there. They're very lightweight and I bought those at REI. Now if we come around here, I did want to show you what's inside the outer mesh pocket. So let's take the things out one by one and we'll show you what's in there. First up, ring gear. This is my Enlightened Equipment Visp rain jacket. It has pit zips. It's a custom. I chose the orange or the red color because I like bright colors. It's actually red. Next up, my z packs rain cover for the pack. Then my shit kit. Sorry for the French. But this is a z packs dry bag, and inside I have my trowel, I have a half a bandana, I have a, a backpacker bidet in there, along with uh, just a couple of tiny sheets of toilet paper. I'm using a backpacker, backpacker bidet. Next up, these are heavy. These are my Hill Sound crampons. They do weigh quite a bit. They weigh a pound. And these will be sent back as soon as I get through the Smokies. So that's why my pack weighs 32 pounds uh, with everything in it. And the last thing I have in here, if you're going on a through hike, or it doesn't matter, if you're going out in the woods and camping in a tent, Buy one of these Nalgene flexible canteens. This one's 48 ounces, and this is used for pee at night. So I never have to get out of my tent at nighttime. This holds a lot of pee. 
<laughs> all right and on the bottom I already showed you a little bit this is actually a sunshade that I cut down really small and this will be in the vestibule right before I get into the tent and hopefully that'll save some dirt from getting inside the tent oh I see one more item in there let's get that out This is my tent steak bag. It has uh, eight steaks. These are really, really lightweight aluminum steaks. I've tried all different kinds of steaks and these I like the best. All right, so like I said, inside my steak bag, there are eight of these steaks and these are super strong and lightweight. They're all cleaned up, ready to go along with these two short and very lightweight poles and those go on the sides of my duplex uh, they fit into these little cups that i have that are super lightweight and they hold up the sides of the duplex very nicely that is the strap that goes across the top of the pack it fastens to this little connector there's the outer mesh pocket of the pack. And I have my Z seat, which I folded open so you can see it. And then my zero camp shoes. So this is the where your foot goes in. This is the bottom, the sole, and you can see the tread on there. It's pretty good. So now let's open the pack. All right, when I open the pack, <laughs> There is a ton of stuff in here. So you, first you unroll it, then you separate it out. All right, so now my pack is open. And if we look down inside, you'll see my duplex tent along with a bag right there. And let's take that bag out and show you what this is. This is actually my enlightened equipment tour jacket and this bag is kind of cool you see these little white things here well it's like a vacuum sack so you put your clothing in there and then you just push down you seal it at the top and the top is actually inside of here so you can see it's an eagle creek bag this one's a medium so you can see how much room there is in there. It's, it's quite big. So you just roll this down. And you just push on this thing. And these little white vents there, the air comes out and it actually forms a little vacuum in there. So that is my tour jacket. Then under or right next to that, this is my duplex tent. Very lightweight. And then next is my food bag. So I'm using I'm using an Ursac. And uh, the Ursac you can actually hang to a tree. So you don't have to hang that way up high. You can hang it to a tree. And uh, I have my name all over the thing. So anyways, I have five days of food in there. Okay, now underneath that is a dry bag. Let's see if I can get this open here. This is another Z-Pax dry bag. So in here is everything that I definitely do not want to get wet. So again, Z-Pax has these little tabs here. Let me open that up and get right back with you. All right. So down inside my pack, way at the bottom, you can see in there I have some miscellaneous bags with miscellaneous things in them. My sleep pad is there along with my event compression sack. 
which has a lot of stuff in there. That's my sleep system. So let's pull these out. I think that's just about it. My sleep pad and my event compression sack. So everything else in here is out except for a couple of trash bags and a camp towel. So let's take a quick look and see what I have in here. Again, in the order from the bottom up, I guess. From the bottom up, first I put my Sea to Summit compression sack in with all my sleep clothes and my quilt. Then alongside that is my Thermarest sleep pad. And then I have this bag, which is my spare hiking clothes. And then I have another pretty much first aid kit with wet wipes, hygiene, a light load towel, um, some ibuprofen, and a rollout ball. It's a cork rollout ball for your muscles. Then I have this bag, which has my guitar picks in it, the repair kit for the thermo rest, some tenacious tape, first aid stuff. Oh yeah, some Dyneema cord. This is super lightweight cord. A little sewing kit. Get some of this cord. It's super lightweight, super strong. I use it everywhere. Then this bag is my GoPro stuff and then my little camp towel. So let's dissect these bags a little bit better. That z Pax dry bag with my spare clothing had two pairs of ex-official underwear in it along with one pair of compression socks. They're darn tough compression socks and a spare pair of Njinji socks inside that and then a spare merino wool pair of darn tough socks so I have a total of three pairs of socks three pairs of underwear uh, <laughs> you can't have enough socks I know three is a little overkill but <clears throat> when your feet get wet you're gonna thank yourself to have some dry socks This small Ziploc bag had a lot of stuff in it. I had my Thermarest field repair kit, a couple of guitar picks, my Z-Line Dyneema cord, just a few pieces of shock cord, a couple of safety pins. This is for Lyme disease. It's a prescription for Lyme disease if I happen to get a tick on me and find it later after it's attached. This is a sewing kit, a couple of Q-tips, tenacious tape, a tweezer, and a nail clipper. And I forgot one thing, inside of the tenacious tape was some spare Cuban fiber repair tape. So that's everything that was in there. This Ziploc bag had quite a bit of stuff in it. First of all, earplugs for nighttime if I need them. Some sun sunscreen, some Gorilla Glue to repair my shoes. Some ibuprofen, some baking soda that I can shake out. A light load towel, this cork ball to roll out muscles and a few wet wipes. And if you're wondering about that last section of the video, yes, I am carrying a lot of ibuprofen. Believe me, at my age, I need some ibuprofen every single day. I have so many aches and pains. Next thing, we'll go through the GoPro stuff. There's all my GoPro stuff, or most of it, anyways. So, starting from right to left, what we have here is... A GoPro Hero 9 with a media mod kit, a remote for the GoPro that's good up to 100 meters or 100 feet at least, 
couple of more earplugs and my iPhone ear pads for editing videos at night. A piece of Velcro that I can use for different things. A small USB cord for charging. This cord is for adapting the lavalier mic to the media mod kit input. This is my SD card connector for my iPhone so I can copy videos from the GoPro over. This is my trail name, Osat, one step at a time. And this contains all of my memory cards along with a polarizing lens for the GoPro. This is my Fitbit charger. And this is my Zodiac remote control for my phone. So unfortunately when you vlog there's a lot of weight involved, a lot of weight penalty. I am hoping I produce some very good quality videos with all this, this equipment. Just to change it up a little bit, I do have a Ziploc bag that contains my AWOL guide and my AWOL guide shows you the mileage on the far left that's how many miles you are from Katahdin the second column is how many miles you are into the trail northbound then there's a description of where you're at along with the elevation on the far right and if you turn the guide sideways you can actually see the elevation profile so if I was hiking this this far in one day or on this page I would actually be climbing then I'd be going across a ridge then I go down into a gap then I climb straight up into another uh, top of a mountain then I go back down then I go back up so it's you're constantly going up and down and up and down on the Appalachian Trail so that is my navigation along with gut hooks on my phone gut hooks uses GPS navigation to show you where you're at really good app and once you buy gut hooks it's a lifetime update that really came in handy last year because last year I was going to hike the Appalachian Trail and I delayed it to this year because of COVID and this year I said I'm just going to hike it next this bag is heavy this has my battery bank and my charging stuff so let's take a look at what's inside that bag Okay, there is everything that was inside of this dry bag from z -Packs. First of all, I have my GoPro Max lens inside of here with a couple rubber bands around it. So you'll be seeing some views with the, with the GoPro Max lens when I get on top of ridges to have a good view. My charger, my wall charger. Next I have my battery bank. This battery bank is 26,800 milliwatt hours, which you can still carry that on the plane. This is a luxury item. It's a six foot iPhone cord so that I can have my iPhone plugged in at night and sit on a bed if I'm in a hostel and edit. These are GoPro batteries. These are the charge cables for charging the battery bank. Lens cleaner charge cable for the Telesyn GoPro battery charger. That's everything that was in that bag. And by the way, the reason why my battery bank and charger and those cables and the GoPro batteries are all in this uh, uh, dry bag is because this is going to be on top of my food bag in the pack. It's going to be outside of the dry bag that's in the pack at the bottom because I may need to have access to this when I get into a town. This is the newer Thermarest x Light sleep pad and it's a large and it has the new wing valve which is a really nice feature and it also comes with a pump sack. So to show you that, I need to open the last item, which is my compression sack. I am using the 
See the Summit Event Compression Sack. It's called Event because what happens is when you put everything in there and compress it down, air comes out of this Event and it is still waterproof. The dimensions of this is about one foot long and about eight inches wide. Let's see what's inside. You are now in the JLDR.com video studio. Let's take a look at what's inside of the event bag. So first of all, you have to release this tension. So after you get most of the tension released, you can go around, pull it like that. And then this just pulls to the side. <clears throat> you release the catch and you unroll it. And the first thing that's going to come out of here is, this is going to be like a clown car in a circus. This is my quilt. This is my Catabatic Gear Flex 15 quilt. There's the foot box. And this is the bottom with the zipper. So that's what the quilt looks like before it fluffs up. It'll fluff up over time. And if you flip this over, the foot box opens up with a zipper and you can completely open this up. Let me show you one feature of this that I really like. This is an open foot box. However, there's no air that can get in here. Normally, people that have quilts like these, there's a big hole and they have to stuff a sock or something in there to prevent drafts. The Catabatic Gear quilt has a snap, first of all, but the main feature of this foot box is right here. There's a draft collar that goes all the way around and when you snap the snap and pull on this cord, it closes up tight. Let me open this up for you real quick. So the nice thing about a quilt is that you can just open this thing up. And in the summertime, you can actually lay underneath that and have it just be a throw over yourself. If you get hot, you just flip it off and you cool yourself down. Let's look at what else is in the uh, compression sack besides the quilt. All right, here's the quilt. The next thing that's coming out of here are the straps, the quilt straps. These quilt straps go around your sleep pad and then your quilt attaches to those. The next thing is a cocoon silk liner. This silk liner goes inside of the quilt, adds about nine degrees of warmth at a weight penalty of about five ounces. Let's see what else is in here. Okay, here's my bug net. Why is my bug net inside of my sleep system bag? Well, because I use that I put my pillow in there and then I put the bug net around my sleep pad that holds the pillow in place. What is this you ask? Well, this is the Therma Rest pump sack. So there's this little opening here that snaps onto your, your X-Lite sleep pad and then you fill it up with air like this, close it up, and then you 
push down and the air comes out of here and goes into your pump or into your sleep pad. Really nice, this is super lightweight. Let's see what else is in here. Oh, okay. This is part of my sleep system. This is my buff. It's a merino wool buff. And this is a merino wool beanie. So at night, I sleep with this around my neck and my beanie is on my head to keep my head warm. Could there be more inside of this bag? Well, let's take a look. Huh, look at that. I have booties. These are enlightened equipment booties and these are synthetic. So there's synthetic insulation inside. They're very lightweight. These are what I'm going to sleep in. Is there anything else? Ah, this is my C to Summit pillow. So this has a little inlet valve right here and you just pull this open, you blow into it. This is a large pillow. What else is in here? Oh, here are my sleep clothes. So this is a long sleeve merino wool shirt that I will sleep in. What else is in here? Wow. These are long underwear. These are merino wool REI ultra light long underwear. I'm going to be sleeping in those. Super warm. Is there anything else? Well, there's one more thing. This is my bug net bag. <laughs> it's actually treated by insect shield. And uh, so when I actually get into bug country, this bug net is going to be used quite extensively, probably from Pennsylvania north. And that's it. There's nothing more in my compression sack. The last item to talk about besides my headgear is this. This is a New Bear GoPro tripod. And let me show you how this works. First, it opens up like a tripod. So you can set this down on the trail or on a table in a hotel room or a hostel and do some recording and it also floats so if you attached your um, GoPro to the top of this and you put this in water it'll actually float on the water and your GoPro is down at the bottom underwater when your GoPro is in the media mod kit it is not waterproof so do not put that in water you have to carry the little latch take it out of your media mod kit and reinstall the latch and then you can go underwater with it. So the last thing I'll show you on this tripod is that it extends up. So to extend it up all you do is twist and pull, twist and pull, twist and pull. So now you have a long selfie stick that you can hold out and video with. To retract it, you twist, go down, go down, go down, twist. Now it's back the way it was. Okay, lastly, let's cover my headgear. From left to right, I have a Tilly Ultralight Summer Cap. In the middle is a Stormy Cromer waxed cotton cap and on the right is a head sweats baseball cap. I contacted Stormy Cromer which is this company right here 
and asked them if they would sponsor me and maybe give me a cap. And so they graciously gave me a cap, sent me one, and they recommended the wax cotton. And I really, really appreciate it, and I am going to use that cap while hiking. However, when hiking on the Appalachian Trail, you're constantly in rain, and you're climbing mountains. And being that this cap is waxed cotton, see it says Stormy Cromer inside, and they're based out of Ironwood, Ironwood, Michigan. The problem is, this material, it's, it's like a tarp. And a tarp is a good thing when you camp. You can hang a tarp over yourself and keep dry. But when you're hiking on a trail like the Appalachian Trail where it rains quite a bit, and then you're climbing mountains all the time, you're constantly sweating. And I'm just afraid that the wax cotton cap is going to be a little bit too hot. What I've done and decided to do is just to take my head sweats cap and uh, I really like this cap. It's super lightweight, weighs about two ounces and it breathes so when I'm hiking I can wear it and pull my fleece hood over the top of that and in camp if I'm cold I can actually pull my Torah jacket hood over the top of both the cap and the fleece hood and it's super warm. Now in the summertime I may opt to have this Tilly sent to me and wear that. It not only blocks the rain but the whole side of this is mesh so there's a lot of air that gets through there and we'll see. This is what the Stormy Cromer cap looks like, just so you know. I want to thank all of you for watching this video. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, by all means, ask the question, and I will attempt to answer it. Once I'm on the through hike, though, I will have very limited access to Wi-Fi, and it's going to be tough answering all the comments that come in. I will try to but I can't promise anything on that. Thanks to all my new subscribers. I really appreciate it. I hope you learned something and all you aspiring through hikers and section hikers and any other hiker that, that there is out there watching this video, I hope you appreciate and learn from it. Because when I was researching all of my equipment, I started about three years ago. And I watched video after video after video of people's gear videos and then I watched their hiking videos and subscribed to their channels and I really learned a lot from doing that. So I hope you enjoyed it. Please, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe. If you like the video, hit the like button. I'm not a professional YouTuber. I'm sort of an amateur and I hope I did a, a decent job with this video. I hope all of you have a great day. I hope all of you have a great summer. This is 2021 and I'm leaving in a few short weeks for the Appalachian Trail. I'm going to have the <laughs> the trip of a lifetime. This is actually my walk to retirement and my trail name again is OSAT O S A T which stands for one step at a time. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.